Hey Power Pals, it's Craig here, editing this episode. Normally this is where you would get a spoiler warning for the events of the film, but it's so last year. How about a spoiler for the episode itself instead? I think for the last two seasons we probably haven't had many plans involving poo, so maybe that's wow. something I don't know. It's all going to change tonight. <laughs> 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 Hello, I'm Adam, and you are listening to Diabolical Evil Schemes Done Better, a podcast where four long suffering friends dissect films' most dastardly schemes and try to improve them. This week, we shall be trying to improve on the villainous plot of Indonesian action thriller The Night Comes for Us. So, stand by for action. Anything could happen in the next 60 minutes. And let's get diabolical. Isn't that Stingray? Yes, good. I'm glad you got the reference. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just trying. I'm just using last week. It was Gladiators, the one I did. Oh yeah. And I thought, oh, may- maybe I'll use like introductions to famous TV shows all the way through the season, <laughs> perhaps longer. So then, at the end, can we sing Aquamarina? Ooh, yes, yeah. of course. Yeah. I think people would be a bit confused, thinking, "Why are they singing that?" After so-? <laughs> well, just tell them that the, sh- that the submarine was built in Indonesia. Yeah, that's probably not a lie. <laughs> Stingray was Indonesian. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to this week's episode. We have got a blood-soaked, bone-breaking gore fest of a show for you. So let's get started with the opening question: What's your most favouritest gory scene from a movie? And we'll go with Craig. Hi, Peril Pals. Craig here. There's a scene in this that reminded me of my favourite gory scene from a movie. I don't like much else about the movie, but it's in Rambo when he gets on the back of a a truck with a a machine gun (laughs) mounted on it and shoots the driver to pieces. (laughs) Pieces. And a fine mist of blood. I love Rambo. Good film. Is that, was that on the, the latest, one of the latest Rambos, the one where he's got the 50 cal? Number four. It was the one from like 2009 or something? Yeah, the fourth yeah, after, one. After, yeah. um, after Rocky Balboa came out, wasn't it? Yeah, that was the, that was the thing, because Rocky Balboa came out and I thought, that's brilliant, it's like a return to classic Rocky. And then Rambo came out I was like, what the fuck is this shit? Uh, but it did yeah. have Julie Benz in it, which was a nice surprise. It did, didn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. right, yeah. It was always nice to see an old favourite pop up in the film and your man from 24 and it was just ridiculously gory yeah yeah it was it was, it was, <laughs> it was really good uh ben well being the teetotal killjoy i am i'm not a big <laughs> fan of gory films Oof. Oh, yeah. oh, but oh, i've got two scenes that stick in my mind from childhood one yeah. is the bone break in the arm wrestle in the fly yes yeah oh yeah being particularly yeah, that's a nice gross one. And yeah. then the other, and I can't tell you what film this is, but there used to be a guy who would come round our street in a van, like a video van, and you'd rent videos off him, Yeah. right? And we rented one video one time. It was kind of like a teen horror. And it's these friends, they end up going around a haunted house, and they get split up, and then one friend finds another friend, but this friend has been crucified, and there's a huge cavity in his chest. Mm. <laughs> And the, the friend who finds him tries to, to help him off the cross, but ends up oh. just untying the cross and it falls to the ground, slams slams the guy to the ground. Like and he's Bobby got Davro. dust in his chest cavity and he's screaming. Like Poppy so Davro, that's what I was thinking. Poppy <laughs> <laughs> Davro so, falls over on stage. <laughs> a bit like that, yeah. And so the friend right winches them back up and looks for something to yeah. clear the dust, sprays this water bottle on them, and the friend starts screaming, screaming. And then they, he, like, dusts the, the water bottle and just says vinegar on it. It's always stayed <laughs> in my Jesus mind. Jesus Christ. That sounds familiar, but I, wouldn't, I don't remember what film it is. It does not ring a bell. Well, Peril Pals, yeah, if you know what film that is. Let right, it's uh, on the back of a postcard to uh, yeah. Diabolical <laughs> Evil Seems Done Better, please. P.O. Box, Box 111, Satan oh. Street. <laughs> oh. uh, the best, the best, the best. Hello, the best, the best, the best here, your reigning champion and my favourite gore scene. It's the first one that leapt to mind because there's a lot to pick from. There's a heck of a lot. Oh, mm. a heck of a lot. Oh, but yeah. I'm plumped for the Ooh. scene in Cabin Fever Oof. where one of the female characters is shaving her legs 
and she just takes all the flesh off her leg oh. as she's scraping oh, the yeah. razor blade up as they start Jesus. to become infected with the flesh eating disease. But that's a yeah, really good that's terrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, oh. that is pretty uh, grim. But... Good film, yeah. Cabin Fever. I haven't seen it for a few years. Yeah. 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 Eli Roth does some decent torture gore porn, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. The eyeball in um, Hostel. Being a, yeah, a lingering yeah. memory. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't care if I ever watch that film ever again. No, I'll never see it again. <laughs> <I don't guess. laughs> the eyeball yeah. in Unchien Andalusia is pretty gross as well. The old oh, yeah. film that Dali and the Dadaists did in the twenties. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, isn't it a sheep oh. eyeball or something? Something like that, a sheep or a bull. Yeah, you, you cinephile. They slice it and bees come out. It's gross. Yeah. Oh, wow, charming. It's very unrealistic. <laughs> I do like the bit where they're dragging a cow across the across the floor by, with a rope for no reason. It just appears. <laughs> As you do. It's very Dadaist. <laughs> and my pick comes from Peter Jackson's Brain Dead, where yeah. Lionel uses a lawnmower, upturned lawnmower, to, <laughs> uh, yeah. to kill a load of zombies. And yeah. the amount of blood and guts everywhere. <laughs> Yeah. It's insane. It's 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 always been probably my most favourite gory scene. But he, afterwards, he's done it. He's like slipping about on all of the stuff as well. It's yeah. great. <laughs> it's absolutely brilliant. It's a fantastic film as well. So yeah, if yeah, you've not seen that, very funny. Yeah. You're wasting your life. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hurling an ashtray into an opponent's face from across the room and using a children's toy jammed into some geezer's eye. Yeah, Omer revels in its bloodlust and its cravings for cinematic judgment of the films of 2018. So, can I have a yeah, Omer, for the following films, please? Hereditary. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking love Hereditary. It's a horrible, spine-tingling film. Gaz... The best, the best, the best is a wonderful fellow who's been trying to get me to watch Hereditary for a few years and I still haven't got around to it. Oh, you should. Oh, you should. I also haven't yet watched Insidious, which I've been been meaning to. That's That's really good Uh, as well. I really like that. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, Hereditary and Insidious, they're they're two films that stay with you for for the haunting aspect. They're They're both really, really creepy. And there's just yeah. something all the way through it. It just feels like somebody's like blowing on your neck all the way through it. <laughs> and they belong to the same genre in my head and will until I watch them both, which is recent horror movies with uh, polysyllabic one name titles. There's, there's a whole, yeah. there's loads of them, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good. The Sinister, yeah. Hereditary, <laughs> Insidious. There's um, oh, Thesaurus. Oh, so, <laughs> dictionary. That other one that James Wan did with the um the brain monster. Spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what's it called? Bloody hell. Uh, Fast X. <laughs> Shitbox. <laughs> right. I've never anyway. seen it. If you're interested. No, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if you'd enjoy it either. To be honest, <laughs> it's very good for people who like that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, perhaps uh, something you should probably avoid. Uh, a Star is Born. Haven't seen it. Never seen, seen it. it. Never seen it. <laughs> no. It's really good. It's really good. I, I watched it with very low expectations. Which version? We talked about this in a previous episode because yeah. I asked Turner if he'd seen any of the previous versions of it and he said that he hadn't. Just the Gaga one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But there's about 17 versions of it, right? I think there's four. Yeah, the Brad- Bradley Cooper, yeah. Uh, Lady, Lady Gaga. Gaga. Lady Gaga. <laughs> a Quiet Place. Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen that either. Yeah, Never seen it. What? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's good. I haven't yeah, seen it's... that, and I haven't seen whatever the... Is it the Bird Box or some shit with Sandra I've Bullock never, in it? I've never bothered watching that one. No. Yeah, that's not a good Bird Box. It's all I, right. Maybe it's not, but it's Sandra Bullock, isn't it? I mean, I don't watch anything yeah. with Sandra Bullock, I mean, isn't it? Once she's got it on the tray, it's pretty smooth sailing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that does happen if you're making a joke. Yeah, I think that you. happens in the film. All right. <laughs> and this is, and I'm pro- probably going to say another, another film probably you two haven't seen now uh, that me and the best of the best best have definitely seen. Upgrade. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, baby. We talked about it because it's made by the same guy as Invisible Man, right? Yeah, Lee Bonnell. Yeah. yeah. And I haven't watched it, yeah. Okay, I've never oh. seen it. I saw Johnny Mnemonic, if that helps. That does help. I still love that film. I wonder whether it's aged Yeah, well. it's really, really, really good. Dolph Lundgren as the priest is amazing. Yeah, like Jesus coming out with yeah. his fucking crucifix hands. <laughs> I thought that was generally accepted as um, Keanu Reeves' low watermark for, for career. <laughs> People hate it, but I always used to love it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everything's Keanu Reeves' low watermark to somebody. The best, the best, the best didn't even like fucking speed. So what can you say? And I think <laughs> Ben didn't as well. So I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a part of shite. <laughs> <laughs> we have also featured a 2018 film previously, Black Panther, all the way back in episode 19. Why not listen to it after this episode? It's a bloody good one, I tell you. The Night Comes For Us is written and directed and produced by Timu Tahajanto and sees the Raid stars Joe Taslim and Iko Uice reunited, this time as old friends turned adversaries. As reformed protagonist Ito seeks to protect a young girl after a village massacre, an antagonist Aryan strives to replace him as one of the Triad's elite six seas. What follows is one of the most brutal and bloody action flicks I have ever seen. The Night Comes For Us started life as a screenplay, then in 2014 it was adapted into a comic form. Then, overcoming half a decade of financing and pre-production hurdles to finally make it to film and was released on the 19th of October 2018. The film received generally good reviews, with Variety saying it boasted some of the most inventive, gory and dazzlingly choreographed screen violence in recent memory and with a Rotten Tomato score of 91% based on 33 critic reviews. It's a film that soon grabs you by the neck, straps you down, puts matchsticks under your eyelids and refuses to let you look away in an adrenaline-packed two-hour thrill. But before we get into the film, I have several questions for you all. Oh my lord. Craig. Yeah. If this film was a cake, what kind of cake would it be? <laughs> if this film was a cake, what kind of cake would it be? Yeah. It Stop would be. Playing for time. Don't interrupt me. I'm. I'm on a... <laughs> oh, he's <laughs> playing for more time. Blaming me. Do 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 do. It would I've be. got a cake. It could be. <laughs> I've got a cake. It could be. It would be a devil's food cake. Oh. Well, you're in the right ballpark. It's actually uh, red velvet cake because so, that's uh, what I was going to say. I was thinking God that. damn it! Yeah. Yeah. That's what I oh, was thinking. Oh, well done, well done, you two. But you're all in the right ballpark area, so I'll give you like a, <laughs> a, a bonus point, imaginary point that we'll probably never keep track of. But you know, it was good. <laughs> ben, I'm free. Julia Stell's character, the operator, was initially scripted to kill her rivals when they tried to call directory services with a high pitched dial tone. True or false? Well, judging by the name, you'd say that has to be true. It is true. That's very well done. Yes. Yeah, it was only canned after test screenings caused audience members' ears to bleed. So, yeah, they have to get rid of it. Really? Wise <laughs> choice. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you mean, of course not, the best of best? The nonsense questions. Do you not hear the, the first one? <laughs> it sounded vaguely plausible. <laughs> what? <laughs> if you like that one, you're going to love your question then. The best of the best of the best. <laughs> yeah. The butcher's shop in the film, Johan the Butcher, was an actual butcher's shop that supplied the film with its meat and blood for the fight scenes. True or false? Um, false. It's actually the butcher's shop that Rocky trains in, and it's in Philadelphia in the United States of America. No, it's actually true. And the set was regularly swept so the remnants could be used in film-branded food items. Uh, <laughs> have you triad our steak? was just one of them, <laughs> along with 6 sea Sausage and, of course, Track Boy Bobby. <laughs> anyway, enough of all that. What did we think of the film? Ben, as someone who's a bit averse to the old blood and gore, did this film have you on an adrenaline high or turning away in horror? Somewhere in between, to be honest. It was a bit of a mixed bag. Mm. On one hand... You've got like the gangster trying to escape his past story that felt a bit played out. And the rivalry between Ito and Aryan 
I felt got lost in the confusion of keeping track of who's trying to kill who. And then the hyper violence that for me didn't really serve a story. But then on the other hand, you've got the mesmerizing fight choreography. And then I'd say probably my highlight, the equally inventive cinematography. I mean, some of the tight shots in particular were just so mm. creative. The one that springs to mind is where the fella's shooting the shotgun and you, the camera's just off the side of it, but it's really yeah. tight on him. But there was examples all the way through these really, really nice creative shots. So overall, it gets a, if you like your violence with a side serving of blood and guts and you're not too fussed about compelling stories, then this movie is for you out of five. And that's out of five. Lovely. Five. Thank you very much. Uh, the best of the best of the best. We've um, spoken briefly about this on a couple of occasions, and I think we're, all, we're probably going to say similar things about it. I would imagine so, yeah. yeah. I think it's a lot yeah, of fun. It's... The very definition of bone-crunching action, this film. If you get a dictionary that has phrases in it, a phrase dictionary. A dictionary. Bone crunching action. <laughs> it will have a photo <laughs> of this film next to it. Um, yeah. Which there's 24 frames a second, so you're not getting very much film for your for your money there. In <laughs> fairness, but it is just a phrase dictionary after all. Like Ben was saying, the camera work is the main thing that I took from it this time. The way that the cameraman is almost a participant in the fight himself. He's right in the middle of of the fights all the time, ducking and weaving mm. out of the way. There's a, one shot that I particularly liked, which is um, on Ito's, like the, the camera that's normally strapped to your chest looking back at you, but it's strapped yeah. to his back yeah. looking over his yes. shoulder. Yeah. Kind of like a video game. Very, very cool. Yeah. And we'll, we'll get to more specific favorite moments later, as per usual. But yeah, the, there's lots of wincing bits that kind of uh, <laughs> make you laugh how, how audacious oh, yeah. they are, how just ridiculously violent. Yes, it's it's a lot of fun. This film, highly recommended from me, and well worth watching. Yeah, fully agreed. And Craig, yeah, I, I mean, I love shit like this. <laughs> I enjoyed the ultra violence and the and the gore on that level. I think I I have to agree. There's some really cool, inventive shots in this, but beyond the gimmicks and the, the showy stuff, there's just some great cinematography going on as well. There's a bit where they pull over the van on the highway at kind of daybreak and it quite heat like mm. which I, I thought was really really beautiful well shot me personally i don't find the story that thin I, I like stories like this and i think this one it leaves enough room for the characters to be a bit more nuanced than usual because they're kind of ambivalent they have different competing strong motives for doing what they're doing like it's quite clear that ito once he reunites with reina doesn't have a ton of time for her. He's like, why don't I do this? <laughs> Compared to all the other characters in her life that really want to look after her. Obviously he does, and he gives everything for her, but also yeah. he's not that interested in her personally. And then Arian, he, you know, ostensibly is there as the the antagonist, but also he he doesn't really want to be a sixties, does he? He wants he wants to rekindle the friendships that he had and move on and start again, but he's just not allowed to. And this is a time when I was confident watching the film that I would be able to tell you what my favourite scene was. And whatever scene I picked, you would have a backup for it. Everybody would be like, well, yeah, that was great. But I'm happy to say that this other scene's my favourite. Because there were like four scenes that I could have said were my favourite scene easily. <laughs> so yeah, personally, this is right up my alley. Ooh. I love <laughs> characters like, like White Boy Bob. Yeah. You get yeah, them, don't you? These zany characters. It's yeah. like Stephen in Braveheart, the guy who says he owns Ireland. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. just a, a little a little crackpot in the mix. <laughs> <laughs> crackpot yeah. with a crack pipe. Yes. <laughs> Great. Well, I think that's a fairly well-rounded um, reviews for everybody so far. And as I've already alluded to, for me, it's just a total thrill ride. I love it. I don't usually remember that many films I watch. Brand new films I haven't seen dozens of times already, but this one it just like firmly lodged in my brain, like somebody had picked up a shard of glass and rammed it into my temple. Once it got going into the violence, you just can't look away. Like you've all said, choreography, fantastic. Cinematography, fantastic. Uh, lighting as well changes frequently through like a yeah. scene, and you're just like, wow. There's one we'll get into afterwards. I was I was gonna 
pick out the one the best of the best said about Ito in, in the third person shot from behind him exactly like a game. And it's just for about five seconds, ten seconds. Yeah. And then they just don't use it again. But it's just like showing off. It's like going, ha, look at this. <laughs> and then they're cr- straight back into the crazy fight scenes. And it's just brilliant. To me, it feels like a natural descendant to Enter the Dragon and stuff like a full-on modern take on Enter the Dragon kind of thing. Mm. And I don't always approve of like hyper violence and the blood and the, the gore and stuff because sometimes I feel like it's substituting for something else and substance in the film. But I don't think it is with this film. I really, really thought the characters are really great. I love the the old gang members all trying to come together again in different ways, but then driven apart again. And I saw it last year when we were filming season four. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, this goes straight on the list. <laughs> Well, uh, when we get to my next pick in a couple of weeks, I've selected a film that's kind of really well known for kind of gimmicky shots and transitions as well. And one of the things about this film that I noticed that I really liked was some really great transitions. Like after mm. the, the opening scene on the beach, it cuts without you realising it to a framed picture of a beach that's inside oh, yeah, uh, Ito's yeah. flat. And then later on, there's a brilliant transition where Ito and Reyna are having a chat on the kitchen floor and you just see Arian's shadow come into frame, but he's actually in a different room, in a different place completely. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if gimmicky is the right word. I think there was really inventive shots like we, we discussed. I don't mean again, gimmicky as an insult, yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm. But I mean, as you said, like the basics, the, the establishing shots were creative, framed yeah. beautifully. And yeah, yeah, I think for me, that's a, a real highlight of the film. Right, we'll get into um, favourite sequences and we'll start with... Oh, just before we do, I've got a recommendation. I've got it. Episode 12, season four of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. It's called The Nightman Cometh. And right. you'll have a lot more fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> the best, the best, the best. Your favourite sequence, if you please. Uh, let me just double check my notes to make sure it happens where I Toss think <laughs> Did, I, okay, yeah. did it actually yeah. happen? Did I just dream it? <laughs> <laughs> My favourite <laughs> moment is a very small thing from a larger sequence where Ito uh, walks into a pool game at the docks between a load mm. of goons and proceeds to obviously smash seven bells out of all of them. But the, the moment that has always stuck with me is when he grabs one of the pool balls off the table and just smashes yeah. that one guy's teeth in. <laughs> yeah. It's like, Jesus Christ, there's a lot of bad stuff in this yeah. film, but that one, you you can just feel it, can't you? My teeth are tingling yeah. just thinking oh, yeah. about it. Oh, yeah. Holy hell. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, I, I really like a satisfyingly brutal kick, and we've discussed before the best part of Louis Leterrier's Incredible Hulk is Hulk kicking... Tim Roth into a tree. <laughs> yes. The best part of yeah. um, Captain America Winter Soldier for me is when he jumps onto the ship at the start and kicks that guy into the Oh, yeah. Bed. And <laughs> there's a great example of that in The Night Comes for Us. Just after the fantastic uh, fight sequence with White Boy Bob and Fatty, where Fatty finally escapes with. Oh, no, not with Rainer. He he catches up with Rainer, who's with his cousin. Yeah. And they've unfortunately been cornered by Alma, uh, with his, she's got her razor string. But when, when Arian shows up, he puts his coat on her head and just kicks her into yeah. that fucking door. And it, like, oh. breaks in half, and she's just limp instantly. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> just a complete full stop to that fight. It was like... It was like fight punctuation, just boom. <laughs> that was lovely. And ben? I don't remember exactly which fight this is from because there are a few fights throughout the film. <laughs> is there? Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> but it's where Ito gets picked up and basically suplexed into a sink. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah it's with the it, operator, it's isn't it? It's incredible. Yeah. Just, yeah. It happens yeah. so quick. You, you, you kind of blink and you miss it, but it's, uh, it was shot brilliantly and it's uh, yeah. a re- mm. real... Really smooth choreo- choreography. Yeah. 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 And it doesn't look like a stunt sink either, does it? It breaks like perfectly no. in half, like a real ceramic yeah. sink would. <laughs> yeah. And he, and after that, he's like fucked, isn't he? Totally. He just goes, oh, oh yeah. He sort of tries to drag himself up against the wall. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah. The sound engineering me. as well is spot on. 
it's yeah. everything yeah. You, yeah, you they, that's it. They have to get that spot on because it's, yeah. it's the, some of the sounds are worse than the actual injuries and, and mortal wounds yeah. and stuff. It's, mm. Yeah, yeah. It's, oh, yeah, like like uh, the best of the best said about the cue ball or the um, getting smashed into the face of that guy. It's like, oof, the sound of it. <laughs> it's, yeah. Fabulous. As for me, um, my favourite scene is the operator standing off against Alma and uh, Elena. And yeah. particular, the best bit is where uh, I think it's um, Elena and her are, f- are fighting after she's taken care of Alma, and they're stood in front of a glass brick wall, and it's all lit up from behind with multicolored lights. And they pause, and then you go to the little neon light, and the fly goes, bzzz, and then he gets yeah. off fighting again. I was just like, ah, oh. yeah, that's <laughs> great, great. That's kind of like punctuation as well. Yeah, the yeah. finger in that scene is filthy. Yeah. Oh she's yeah, like, yeah. She just oh, goes snap. Yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> Get that off. Useless. <laughs> the thing that I was talking about that reminded me of Rambo is in the back of the police van when he tasers the guy and he it causes him to shoot his buddy about fifteen million times in the face and his face <laughs> yeah. just evaporates. Oh, yeah, it just disappears. <laughs> but that that was the only minor letdown for me is that during that police van fight the doors of the police van didn't swing open because I think that would have just made that if the if the fight had started kind of spilling out onto the sides of the van, that would have been a lot of fun, but uh, probably very dangerous. Yeah, like hanging onto the back door. Ooh, yeah, I would yeah. have liked a bit of back door action. Yeah. Le cousin dangerous. All right, we'll go on to favorite lines, and we'll go to Ben. Do you want me to say it in the original Indonesian, or can I? Translate? Yeah, you, go on. you can say it in both if you if you wish. Yeah. Wow. I don't want to show off, so I'll just stick to the English. Okay. I didn't know what to expect with this film at all. I'd never heard of it. Had no inkling what it was about. And it started off a little bit slow. I was like, all right. And then it kicks off with that fight in the strip club with Arian. Yeah. And he batters that guy who's disrespected the the woman in there. And then afterwards, Arian's on the phone and he apologizes. He says, apologies, I was preoccupied. It's just like battered 15 people. <laughs> <laughs> it was just the way, like that juxtaposition of this really frenetic fight and then this really calm line where he's answering the phone. Yeah, nice. nice. Uh, Craig? It's mainly for the delivery, but the moment when White Boy Bob, to save Shinta's life, pretends that they're breaking up to the other guys in the lift and he's like, yeah, yeah fuck off, honey. Off you go. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. It's a nice bit of comic relief out of it. Yeah, he's he's such good comic relief in that. Yeah. And obviously like he is on a par with the rest of the cast in terms of his martial arts ability. So for him to play kind of the modern sleazy equivalent of like a drunken master, you know, a a, cr- a crack master. <laughs> I thought it was a really cool <laughs> idea. Yeah, but you see he's got a ton of heart as well. So you, you mm, can't help yeah. but root for him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Great yeah, character. Yeah. Uh, the best, the best, the best. Well, uh, Craig took my favourite line from from one. Ooh, oh, okay. You go, so, girl. I've got a very slight uh, second pick from Shen Wu, who uh, says, "You know, this sounds like a fucking gangster movie." Yeah, something. It got it got a little titter yeah. from me. The um, yeah, me yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. 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 It felt yeah. a little bit tangy yeah. for me. That I was like, yeah. yeah. This is why the best, the best, the best, and I enjoyed the Matrix Resurrections, and no one else did. We're like a bit of mess, <laughs> don't we? It was Keanu Reeves just winking at you the whole time? <laughs> yeah, but not in the movie. I I was just watching it with him, and he kept <laughs> tapping me on the shoulder and going, "Hey, hey, what's this bit? What's this bit?" And I was like, "I'm it's watching good. it." <laughs> you, could just, you could just hear his moist eyeball winking at him inside. <laughs> My favourite lines from again from the uh, Six Seas operator showdown. The operator says, "You're going to regret that." She says, "What for calling her a bitch? No, for wearing white." Yeah, and then, uh, and then about two minutes later, she's getting garroted by her. Own. Yeah. She's wired. Oh, Ruins Jesus. a shirt, doesn't it? It. They're not six C's, are they? They are six C's, yeah. I thought only Ito and Shien Wu were the two six C's that were shown in it. No, Alma's definitely no, six C's. Yeah, the, the yeah. other two were six C's as uh, well. Okay. Yeah. 
Sounds like a cough medicine or a cough drop. <laughs> oh, get yourself a six C's. You're thinking of seven C's. Seven C's, cold liver oil, yeah. Well, there you go, that's why. <laughs> I'll be in the cold, dead ground before I recognise the Pacific Ocean, is what somebody said when they were making this film. <laughs> <laughs> Bosses Lackey and Six C's Shenwu is on the hunt for Ito after Ito betrayed the triad by killing their men and protecting the child Rainer. After eliminating all of his friends and leaving no place to go to ground, Ito is still alive. Despite expending dozens of men and after giving Aryan one last chance to kill Ito, he fails. Whilst his backup plan of two other Six C's, Alma and Elena, are also defeated by the mysterious Operator. The best, the best, the best. Was Chen Wu's plan all show and no go? Yeah, I mean, you'd think that he would know his own man in Ito, wouldn't you? And that mm. he would be able to calculate that he's the best of his best and that mm. he needs some more manpower, maybe source manpower from, from elsewhere, maybe get some Yakuza in there, maybe some Mafia guys. The guy that stands doing nothing Jimmy for ages. Yeah, Timmy so, yeah. Mallet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just check, check the overhead storage. He might be in there, you don't know. <laughs> well, it seems to me like a lot of the gangs who first go around to beat up Fatty and White Boy Bob, they're not triad, are they? They're just local gangs, which is they're why when Pissons. when six C's show up, they change sides, don't they? They're like, fuck this, let's, let's team up and fight. You know, mm, this yeah. bitch coming out of the... Yeah. Good luck trying to track who's killing who in this film. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's pretty difficult. <laughs> Can't say that it matters. Don't really matter. <laughs> Don't really matter, does it? Don't really matter. In the words of Begbie, it's obviously some cunt was going to kill some cunt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Awful plan. Awful. I mean, all he's done is call Arian, who he knows has a relationship with Ito anyway. And then he just sent streams, like wave after wave of his own men after them. <laughs> so it's kind of like the triad equivalent of a moth flying into a light bulb, forgetting about <laughs> it and then flying back into it. So for that, he only gets three florets of soft boiled broccoli from me. Three florets? Goodness gracious. Yeah. That is a harsh Broccoli harvest. Damn. Yeah. Do you agree with that uh, summary, Craig? Well, I think the major flaw in his plan is Arian, but not for the reasons that you said. I don't think it's incompetent that is the problem with Arian. I think it's his own kind of mixed loyalties and more than more than loyalties, his own personal desires. I just yeah. don't think he wants the six C's position really. I think he hates the triad. That's what I thought he was, you know, if you put someone that's got history with the person yeah. you're trying to kill, there's always a chance it will go wrong, right? And that was what I I thought, rather yeah. than incompetence, yeah. it was the history. Yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously he does beat the absolute living shit out of Ito, but he yeah. has the opportunity to kill him and, and, you know, doesn't take it. And I think that's just because of his own kind of internal demons. Mm. It won't, won't allow him to, to end it. So, yeah, that I think is the major flaw in his plan. And it's also the crux of his plan, if we're being honest. Yeah. Although he does send um, Alma and Elena, I guess he didn't know about the operator. And why is she even involved? I'm not. I'm not even sure. I understand why where she comes from or why. I think she was just a smooth operator. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's that solved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd uh, agree with all. Uh bit of all what you said there. Arian is conflicted the whole way through and, uh, and he wears his emotions on his sleeve. It's not difficult to tell and obviously, yeah, he lets him get away when really I think a more determined and steadfastly made up mind would have nailed Ito in the back as he walks out of the garage or the warehouse that he did. Yeah. So, tough for him. What would you have done if you were Arian? Oh wait, let's find out after. Do, 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 do. We have reached a point where we are about to unveil our own diabolical plans, where we compete for peril points. In the final scene, we see Ito safely place Reino on board a departing ship, Waver Off. 
He then gets back into his car to be confronted by Chen Wu, the more tried henchman. Grinning savagely, Ito floors his car towards them as they open fire where his fate and the triads are left unknown. However, could we do any better? Ben, how would you solve Chen Wu's conundrum of Ito and the Operator? After a day fraught with violence and chaos, Ito, the Operator and the girl are starving. They search for a restaurant nearby, but it's very late and everywhere seems closed. Except, as fate would have it, for a peculiar mobile noodle cart nestled inconspicuously at the end of a dimly lit alley. The sign atop flickers in the evening breeze, promising a deal too good to ignore. Two for the price of one, and kids eat free. Behind the cart stands a vendor, his face obscured by a big floppy chef's hat and a pair of natty cataract glasses. It's Xian Wu, the formidable Six Seas Triad Man, unrecognisable in his ingenious disguise. With a flourish, he serves them generous portions of his finest noodles, their aroma a siren song to the hungry trio. The meal is a symphony of slurps and sighs of satisfaction. As they polish off the last strands of noodles, Shen Wu, with a magician's grace, mind you, presents them each with a fortune cookie. Cracking open the cookies, they find messages that are oddly personal and profound. Ito's reads, In the heat of adversity, your true strengths will be forged. The operator says, Burn away doubt and fear, and let your confidence shine like a blazing inferno. The girl with a giggle reads hers aloud, Embrace the flame within you, for it is the spark of your greatest transformations. Intrigued and amused, they look up to find the vendor pointing a flamethrower at them. He pulls the trigger, burning Ito and the operator to a crisp and killing them dead in an instant. As he takes aim at the girl, her miserable face convinces him that she has been through enough. He takes her hand and leads her to the nearest electronic store where he buys a video camera. The next day, they begin their new venture together, a food blog. <laughs> <laughs> Two bowls full becomes an instant sensation as they traverse the Indonesian archipelago from the bustling streets of Jakarta to the serene rice fields of Bali. Each meal, a new chapter in their ongoing saga. Uh, you had to have a happy ending, didn't you? you know, yeah, sap. and after, after I saw Chiam Wu eating noodles, the plan formed immediately in my mind. Oh, you better believe I've killed the kid in mine. In a mouse trap, a giant mouse trap. Part of your plan there was what inspired me to go down the route I've done with mine. I thought the only thing this film needs is a flamethrower. So I'm glad uh, I didn't use that in my plan. But it this hasn't come up for tangent. a while, has it? You, you, I mean, you used to go on about flamethrowers quite a lot back in yeah, season I have, one. I have, I have used one in one of my plans, I think. Yo, I think you that. love yeah. a flamethrower. That's yeah. famous. Everyone yeah. knows that. Who doesn't, yeah. Just think, say my name, and you think of a flamethrower straight away. Have you seen Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Turner? Yeah. Uh, I bet you love yeah. the end of that, don't you? He's like, ah, <laughs> ah, it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> so Ito wouldn't recognise uh, Chen Wu as the head of the Six Seas sort of thing, isn't he? He's like the number one. Usually he would. Usually he doesn't wear a floppy chef's hat. <laughs> And cataract glasses. But also, Ito's had a long day of fighting, so his eyelids are a bit swollen. Okay. <laughs> what about the op- the operator's in pretty good nick, though, isn't she? Yeah, she's never met Xian Wu. She's... she's looking for the six Cs, isn't she? She's looking for all the six Cs, so she must know. Yeah, but that's, like. that's why she's never found them. She doesn't recognise them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Relies a bit on them not finding anywhere else to eat before they discover this back alley noodle place that's really well hidden. I'm so glad you said that, because what's really happened is that Xian Wu sent his men around to close all the other restaurants in the background. Uh, okay. I, had that, I had that locked up in the bank, just in case that question Good came it. up. Good for you. There you go. Well there you go. You did it. You did it. Uh, we'll move on to Craig, then, please. Xian Wu doesn't just want Ito and the operator dead. He and the triad bosses want to sow chaos in Jakarta so they can step in and take control. On top of that, whoever joins the Six Seas 
needs to prove their loyalty to the Triad in a manner at least as convincing as Arian killing his old friend Ito would be. Therefore, there is only one that fits the bill. Only one killer so efficient, one assassin so deadly, one soldier so loyal, one legend so chaotic that Chen Wu can trust to successfully do the job. Chen Wu sends Elena in to do what she does best with her cookery skills. Cookery as in the knife. I was going to say, what she's cooking. (laughs) Perfectly bisect a freshly baked (laughs) sub roll down the middle. (laughs) <laughs> Chop up some crisp iceberg lettuce real nice. Slice some tomato, onions and cucumber. While her just friend, Alma, uses her razor string to slice some smoky cheeses and deli meats. They dress like sexy delivery drivers and take the perfect sandwich to Ito, who ravenously shares it with Raina. And that's when the killer strikes. Silent. Invisible. Think Joel Silver. <laughs> Think, Lawrence Fishburne. You guessed it. The killer is Thrax, the deadly virus from Osmosis Jones. <laughs> Unknown to Ito, Elena and Alma have wiped their asses for six seconds each with the Ugh. delicious hoagie. Which, let's be honest, even if he did know, he'd probably still tuck in the dirty dog. <laughs> The microscopic particles of feces carry hundreds of Thraxes, way too many for David Hyde Pierce to deal with, and it's not long before the pair are erupting violently from both ends, shitting themselves to death, succumbing to dehydration. The operator is confused and hungry when she discovers the scene, not having the presence of mind to disregard the half-eaten hero, which smells like yummy gooch, so she gobbles it down greedily. Her stomach gurgles a sad lament, and the last sound she hears is a squelchy little toot. <laughs> so I, I don't know who that baddie is because I don't think I've seen Osmosis Jones, or I might have seen him. He's just a you know he's he's norovirus. He's he's uh, COVID nineteen. He's he's this week's H one H one N one five one yeah. N one yeah whatever it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Whichever the flavour of the month is, we all got to be scared of. The flavour of the month is yummy gooch, but yeah, he's a he's a virus. <laughs> From their butts. Is it like um, road trip like stuff where he chucks the French toast up and catches it in his trousers and wipes it in, or is it like actual <laughs> full on poo? <laughs> I don't remember that from road trip. Do you remember that? He no, it's been a long French time since I've seen road trip. I remember it now you said it, but I didn't remember it before. Imagine they both look clean and the sandwich looks appetizing enough, but yeah. it's the unseen stuff, isn't it? You know, what's on your kitchen yeah. counter, what's on your toilet seat, that's what's going to get you. Really, yeah. And uh, also, what's between the, the buttocks of um, Six C's assassins? A couple of questions from me. Yeah. Rim jobs. How do you explain those? Rim jobs. Rim yeah. jobs. You, 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 so, how, much, uh, how much detail do you uh, want? I've, I've always wanted to know. Yeah. <laughs> this has nothing to do with the podcast. Well, well, well. I'm just taking this opportunity. Are you asking me why people who deliver those don't get sick? Yes. And they probably have a wet wipe before they get, do those kind of things, don't they? Oh, they look clean enough. <laughs> that's the thing, they look clean enough, that's what I'm saying. Oh, uh, that's yeah. how they get you. That's how they get you. A wet wipe Perfect or a bubble plan. bath before and ideally afterwards, yeah. Yeah, and you shouldn't eat for a while. And you need to discuss yeah. that you're going to do it way in advance. So don't surprise your partner with a rim job, folks. No, no. Cause they <laughs> a might bit be. of life advice from Diabolical Podcast there. <laughs> the that's the quote for the you, episode. <laughs> If you surprise them too much and they're ready to uh, expel something, you might surprise them. I think them we too finally, much. I say we, oh. I've finally gone too far for the best, the best, the best. He's not enjoying this. Well, at all. I did, I did, I did, I did say at the start of this um, episode that I think we've gone a bit averse yeah. to poo recently, and I, I'm exactly. glad to see that's been redressed with your plan. So I'm very, very yeah, I promised you, didn't I? You did, you did, and you kept your promise. Well, I'm my word. I gave you Chekhov's log. <laughs> you're like you're like a podcast in Nostradamus. <laughs> Usually, I would say you know it take ages to get ill, blah blah blah, all these things in opposition. But then I'm remembering, I think you should leave. Where yeah. he talks about having poop on the receipt, right? Fuck. <laughs> and he dies oh, like yeah. five minutes after. <laughs> <laughs> he used one sheet to wipe the mud pie, and now my stomach's <laughs> fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Any further questions for Craig? I think that's that's more than enough. 
So we'll have uh, the best, the best, the best, please. Here we go. I mean, still laughing at mine. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've asked Arian to take care of the turncoat Ito, but a man doesn't rise to my position without an insurance policy or two. It's actually illegal to take out more than one insurance policy for the same object. But, well, I am a criminal after all. (laughs) (laughs) Since he appears to have a soft spot for innocent young children, I shall use that weakness to my advantage. I shall gather a cadre of young younglings and position them everywhere that I think Ito might hit. The slaughterhouse, Fatty's apartment block, the docks and what have you. Upon his arrival, he'll still pulverise every last one of my goons, naturally, but I can always get more of them, and in fact I shall. Whilst Ito is weeping like Brendan Fraser in Bedazzled at the sight of the several children and thus defenceless, another wave of my NPCs will swarm him and pull his arms and legs off or something. (laughs) He's no Monty Python Black Knight and therefore will swiftly perish thanks to my diabolical scheme. A few of the kids might get pulverised during this climactic melee, but I can always get more of them. And as for the (laughs) motorbike assassin known as the Operator... Well, I shall make use of the children again. Only ones with slightly better assassination skills than her. (laughs) Then truly, the assassin shall become the assassinated. By the children, I mean. Thanks for clearing that up. (laughs) So, in a nutshell. In a nutshell, you place fake children to rescue in front of him everywhere that you think he might hit. Fake children. Well, they're, fake, they're real fake children, orphans, but fake they're, they're on Just the, little people. the 6 C's side. <laughs> Holding lollipops. 6 C's soldiers oh, I see. to be children, child soldiers of the 6 C's. Right. Who disarm him metaphorically uh, in order for the grown-up goons to pull his arms and legs off. Right. How is it that the triad have been able to train children to be better assassins than the operator who is shown? in this film, to be the, the one person capable of besting Ito. Yeah, but after he's had the shit kicked out of him loads of times. Uh, time and money. That's all it takes. <laughs> a lot of time, a lot of time, a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> I got my mind set on you. <laughs> What's the thing that separates adults and children? Well, in your case, it's a restraining order. <laughs> 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 oh. um, lots of things. Uh, muscles. Uh, yeah. Tick, yeah. Hair Tick. in different places. Bodily odor. Keep digging your own grave, baby. Just keep digging in- your own grave. Intelligence. <laughs> uh, oh, wow. um, and probably the most important is time. Adults have been on the planet a lot longer than those little fellows. Hmm. So you say time and money. I put it to you. There is never enough time. To make a child better than the operator. Well, okay. Adults usually have more money than kids as well, don't they? Yeah. Let's say. I'm well, I've got way more money than my kids. Let's say the operator. Let's say the operator is 30 years old. Yeah. Now, you get four, four 10 year old kids. That's 40 years right there. They've outgunned her by 10 oh. years straight away. And I'm talking. Yeah, I'm convinced that works. I'm talking like 20 kids per location here. So that's 200 years of experience. In the room. Can you like glue them together to make them come and experience? Wait, if they kill an adult, even like the adults tied up, mm. then those years transfer to the kid like a conquer. So yeah, yeah. like uh, high right. <laughs> like a conquer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I prefer uh, conquer than a Highlander, but yeah, I think we're on the same page. That's, yeah, makes uh, sense. A very, very strange analogy. <laughs> I've got to say. <laughs> <Newton's> cradle. <laughs> <laughs> that's how i do all my skill checks <laughs> like if if i talk to someone who's got 11 gcses and i stump them with a question that means i've got 11 more gcses now. <laughs> so you must have 11 gcses by now <laughs> four <laughs> <laughs> you'll stump someone one day <laughs> yes yes that's a spirit any further questions for the best, the best, the best? No, he's dug his own grave deep enough, I think. Incorrect. I've dug out woods. <laughs> I'm going to bring us on home.
Don't bring a knife to a gunfight. That's the old saying, isn't it? How about not bringing a gun to a rocket launcher fight? You see, Chen Wu isn't thinking big enough. All these close quarter battles play into Ito and the operator's hands. They're too good in tight spaces. And letting Ito drive his Mercedes at you, regardless of how many AK-47s you have, it's just plain silly. Especially when your minions have attended the Galactic Empire School of Marksmanship. Chen Wu attends a terrorist arms bazaar and buys a cat of military equipment. He's got old Cobra attack helicopter, a bloody big cargo plane, a couple of tanks, dozens of RPGs and some stinger missiles. Then he employs some cold-blooded ex-Special Forces mercenaries to use all this clobber. There'll be no weaving through the traffic on your bike this time, operator. The Cobra attack helicopter has you in its sights. Locked on and with several missiles and a 30mm cannon. I think you're going to drive your motor straight at me, Ito. How about a 100mm tank ground straight into your engine block, cocksucker? A couple of RPGs, just to make sure you won't escape the wreckage. All those martial arts and brutal street fighting skills Avoid against superior firepower. So they've they've got a shit hot helicopter. Yeah, <laughs> C- Cobra attack helicopter, state of the art, bang bang. But you can't fault the logic, I suppose. Uh, unless you you happen to be James Bond, quite difficult to defeat helicopter. Did you like the terrorist arms bazaar? Arms bazaar, yeah. That was brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> nice callback. Um, it's a lot of money, though, isn't it? It's a lot of money, but he needs to wipe him, Ito, and the operator off the face of the planet. And they can't rely on like ten dollar hoodlums with AK forty sevens, and then people with like baseball bats and meat cleavers trying to do the job of trade for professionals. Got to spend money to make money, haven't you? Speculate to accumulate. But Chen Wu, he's eating at out- outdoor noodle carts. He hasn't got he hasn't got two <laughs> pennies to rub together. <laughs> it's yeah, old habits, isn't it? That's why old habits. He likes, you right. know, still, still, yeah. a touch, still humble, really, but he's obviously got big problems as well. Saving his money for attack helicopters. Exactly. The thing about $10 hoodlums with AKs is they kind of, they stay under the radar, you know, nobody outside Jakarta cares about them, but he start buying attack helicopters and tanks. Suddenly the UN yeah. are taking notice. And, and flying them into <laughs> Jakarta. <laughs> He'll cook up some cockamamie story about, uh, you know, some sort of because he said he wants to create chaos in Jakarta anyway, doesn't he? Yeah. That's why he said, so I thought this would be a good start. Like, yeah. Why have I got an attack helicopter? It was a parade. What, what? Yeah. Breaking my balls, yeah. UN. Come on. <laughs> just uh, get in a helicopter, fly it off over the sea and just crash into the sea. <laughs> Does the UN get involved in conflict? Or are you thinking of NATO? Uh, maybe. Jesus. It's not like fucking Clarkson. <laughs> yeah. let's, let's let's be clear about which fucking international bodies do what, please. <laughs> I don't want to confuse the listener. This is a yeah, factual yeah. broadcast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're listening to Diabolical Politics. <laughs> right. Okay. Oh yeah, I forgot we have to vote. Yeah, we do. <laughs> well. Unless I'm very much mistaken, which I usually am, those schemes were groin grabbingly diabolical. But there can only be one or two or three or four people that get the points this week. In summary, we had Ben's noodle trailer flamethrower food blog. We had Craig's Osmosis Jones shit sandwich. <laughs> we had the best of the best of the best, fake orphans, better assassins. And we have my big guns mercenary plan. So, can we please reveal who vote for? We're going to go in reverse alphabetical order. So we'll start with the best, the best, the best, please. Well, much though I was loath to do so, it seemed quite sneaky. And so I've drawn a turd with some flies around it with the name Craig. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Good there turd. Cheers. Uh, Craig, please reveal who you voted for. I voted for, first of all, the plan that noticed the same thing that I did, which is that they got to be got be hangry after all that fighting. And then also I enjoyed the idea that they would have a blog afterwards. So I went, Ben. <laughs> Yay. 
Ben, who have you voted for? Well, it's going to seem like a mutual tug off. Oh, I have voted for the sneaky plan that I thought was it maybe wouldn't work exactly, but the idea of sneaking some kind of poison or or, uh, or virus into them would work, and so I have voted for Craig. And I Very have good. drawn a shit sandwich with some flies flying right. around it. Eww. Nice Spinal Tap references of everybody as well. As as luck would have it, and as I said at the start, I think we've been missing Pooh for a while. So <laughs> yeah. with that with that plan with that plan, he won my heart straight away, and I voted for <laughs> Craig. It's a clean sweep, just like what Elena did to her gooch. <laughs> <laughs> Okie dokie. So the best of best of best, what has that done for the Diabolical Leaderboard? Bit of a change, bit of a change. However, Ooh. still in the lead with 10 points, we have Ben. So but two now in shasha, second place. Hush, hush, Edward. With eight points each is myself <laughs> and Craig. And bringing up the rear with the old sixer is this week's host, Adam. Sixies. Yeah. Oh, oh well. How many points have I got again? Ten. Ben, ten. Oh, feels good. Oh, yeah. That's a good share, that. Feels good. Uh, the best of the best of the best. You are picking next week's film. So uh, what are we going to be watching? Next week, uh, we're going to be dipping our toes back into the sea of horror. Oh. And we're going to be watching a wacky Italian horror film from Dario Argento named Phenomena. Ooh, lovely. Ooh. Ooh, lovely. Oh, lovely old Dario Argento. He's lovely. He is. Oh, I give him a big cuddle yes. and a kiss on the I cheek. Would, I'd, 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 oh, kiss. I might squeeze his bum a little bit as well. <laughs> he was the originator <laughs> of the polysyllabic <laughs> one name horror film, of course. Mm. Yeah. Tenebrae. Yeah. Phenomena. Suspiria. Black Christmas. Inferno. <laughs> Black Christmas. That's two words. You're not keeping up. <laughs> Plus the wrong director. Nightmare <laughs> on Elm Street. <laughs> Whoa, no, there you go. Get back on track. <laughs> and that about wraps things up for another week. We are available across the socials on at Diabolical Pod. So why not talk back to us? You never know, you might get a reply. So until next week, dear friends, this sounds like a gangster movie, don't you think? Lovely. Nice. She's a smooth operator Marina Aqua Marina Oh, we're doing Aqua Marina <laughs> What are these strange enchantments that start, start Whenever you're near, near. Marina Aqua Marina Why don't you whisper the words That my heart is longing Oh, yeah. Yummy gooch. <laughs> <laughs>